now committed to the awful subtitles. Tears of the Kingdom doesn't even try to win any of its older fans back, doubling down on what was already doing by expanding the world both to the skies above and the depths below. Yes, equipment still breaks by the slightest breeze, but now you can dip them in ancient goat goo and make it stick to things. That's pretty neat. What some might call dungeons are at the same level as the Divine Beasts from the previous game, but personally I was fine with those, so quality mileage might vary. The bottom line is, if you want more bread for your wild, then here's an entire new one and a half. We can all agree that this is the worst title, right? Ignoring those with the obnoxious suffixes, not even Minish Cap was that bad. It just didn't inspire thoughts of adventure. With this being a sequel, one would think that the kingdom would have pulled their shit together by now, but an old raisin wakes up and the kingdom turns into a little bitch. Not like he wasn't based before, or the contrary even, to the one style while standing up, but this Ganondorf is great, with the red design and the great personality. Motherfucker just loves being evil, and I can't really blame him for it. After all, he was named after true evil in his world, he just leaned on it harder than most hood. If I had some sort of business, I would honestly hire the guy. He seems like someone with the drive to succeed, we didn't plunging the world into darkness or sails. The story is still structured the same way as the previous game, with some real cool moments which I won't get into details because who cares, the gameplay is where the fun's at. Link somehow managed to lose his iPad and now has to borrow the one from Zelda, so he doesn't have any of his old apps like Stasis and Flappy Bird, replacing them by arguably better ones. Instead of only being able to grab metallic objects, now you can grab most of the stuff that is not nailed down with this one ultra hand. Stasis is replaced by reversing time, which is a shame, I enjoyed eating things and watching them flying through the sky at max speeds, but I guess this is useful for situations such as when something falls from the sky and you use it as a sky elevator. A scubator, if you might. Both bombs and freezing stuff is just gone, but fuck that. You can now glue stuff using ancient goat goo, which apparently is really sticky and welds surprisingly well, but it does have the particularity of being weak to jet fuel, so it's recommended not building anything too tall with it. Not like you can, the limit is like 15 items together or something. The last and most fucked up one is Ascend, where you can no-clip from a straight ceiling to its connecting top. I ain't contesting how useful it is. But I played Steins Gate, and I know that people trying to go through solid walls doesn't usually end well. Together with that, the big focus this time is in ancient technology from the sky that it is powered by rechargeable batteries, which can be further upgraded like the art containers and the stamina bar. There is a great selection of gadgets to attach to anything you want, and they are mostly found near the micro puzzles that require them, or you can use these sky gacha machines that in exchange for a specific item let you roll for a unique set of disposable gadgets. Luckily the map tells you what drops from each machine, so if later on you want to grab a specific thing, you can easily know where to go. While the controls take a bit to get used to, building is a real joy that largely comes from the chaotic results of trying to MacGyver your way through a problem, and relearning how physics work in Hyrule. Once I was trying to use this glider thing as a boat, because I fell into the water and there wasn't an easy way to get out only to discover that the two fans I glued to it were powerful enough to lift me off. The game is filled with these precious moments, and it's a perfect litmus test to know if someone is shitposting if they ever declare that the game is too boring. You honestly can't say that playing this isn't fun when you got all of these systems that can interact with each other in interesting ways. By this point, I don't know who keeps asking for dungeons like the old games, but they really gotta stop. I just recently played both Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, and it almost made me think that I ate video games. Digital entertainment surely doesn't age, but it sure doesn't help when you have the insight of the improvements from future technology. They are still solid games, but I find that their quality scales negatively to how many video games you actually played. With the old patience being put on test, with the amount of gameplay and original hardware related contrivances. 
The most egregious problem is the amount of dead time from all of the end holding and repeating sequences. Like for example, all of the... Da -da -da -da. Oh, I hope it's something useful. Uh, nope, it's the map. Maybe this one will be useful. Mm, no, nope, it's, it's the compass. <laughs> okay, no, this time for real though, I bet my left dead that it's going to be something fucking stamps. Tears of the Kingdom still has problems in both of these categories, but the amount of acting freedom easily counterbalances it. I'm not here to discuss the overall series, but at least the weapon durability conundrum is built around the entire game. Older games you either get rupees that are always useless because of the amount of free items that you get off the ground, or a piece of art, which is... Why do I even need more health? The game is already easy as it is, and even if I die I just restart at the beginning of the room. Here you get all sorts of resources to exchange for a larger array of rewards, or new equipment, which will always be useful. Is it annoying? Maybe. But so is the stamina meter. So you either enjoy this constant push and pull, or you don't. Shrines are also back, and their quality is also based on how much you like puzzles. Hell, sometimes opening the shrines are the puzzles themselves. I could be wrong on this, but I think they did a better job this time, at least in teaching the player how to use the new tools, in particular scenarios, so you can later use them creatively in the world at your own pace. The often ill-named Ubisoft towers are also greatly improved, with the puzzle being how to get into them instead of a slow climbing section. And after that, you can catapult yourself to the sky anytime you want, which is great, especially when it happens at the right time and you manage to catch the beautiful sunset in the horizon. Which would have been even better if this was on better hardware, but hey, it can't be helped. If anything, it's impressive that the Switch can take all that they are doing with this game. The drip marketing was all about the sky content, and everyone thought that was it, when they really should have put more focus on the underground portion. Cause goddamn, that thing is huge and spooky. Maybe it's the sense of the unknown that comes from a new game, but I really felt like I was back on the tomb of the giants, being blind as a bat without knowing what the hell was going on, and everything near killing me in one swing. I'm gonna keep it at that by just saying that, from what I've explored, there is definitely some wild shit down there. One might make the comparison in sequel progression with the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, especially with the somber tone and kind of fucked up alternative conclusion, but in contrast, there is also a lot of joy to go around. Seeing past characters after however long it was since the events of the previous game is great, and something that is usually lost in this series of one-time settings. Like Breath of the Wild, I believe they nailed the game's pace, because you have your clear goals that you can work on, or you can just explore and always find something to do. If there is ever a point where you want to complete your journey, you can just waltz right to the end area. This time, the final objective is a bit less clear than the castle in the middle that is radiating evil energy, so the only thing stopping you is knowledge, as after you know what is up, you can go straight to the boss from a fresh file. Just remember that it's likely that you're going to get a beating of a lifetime if you try it. While on that, combat is mostly unchanged, with the fusing of items adding some nice spice to your arsenal, even if it's mostly to look cool as during the tougher encounters, the superior solution is still using the equipment with the biggest number on it. But sometimes diplomacy fails, so strapping a rocket to an arrow really is the only sensible solution. I gotta give shoutouts to Boxman, which you can stumble upon in the tutorial area and in several other locations. It's a great fight and a fun way to learn how to use the new abilities in combat while keeping that Gunstar Heroes vibe alive. As for weaker aspects, the only real thing that comes to mind is the performance. The Switch is trying its best, but sometimes that is not enough for the more demanding areas. But maybe I'm just used to the performance of Breath of the Wild that was elevated to such a great quality with all of the community's efforts. If you're looking for further nitpicks, having to open the menu every time you want to shoot a fused arrow kinda halts the pace of the action. Using some of these champions' abilities are a bit clunky and could have been easily put on a button combo. Shield surfing did I need to destroy the durability so fast? This really stops me from doing everything I can, holding on to where I really am and pretending I'm a superman. Also thank god that they stopped locking content behind amiibos, that pissed me off in the original game. If they wanted to set it up so that you can grab stuff sooner, that is fine, 
but locking it completely behind an obnoxious extra payment is fucked up. This is a game that greatly benefits from going in without knowing much and without looking at any guides, but if there was anything I wish to know as soon as possible is if the Master of Cycle Zero is still in the game, because I have this need to strap 8 rockets to it and jump off the Sky Islands with it. I did hear something about an underground robot, but that place is huge and dark, so I haven't found anything like that. The entire game just felt like the developers got that one video of a player trying to land on the flying divine beast only to be met with disappointment. So they went ahead and tried their best to redeem themselves. Does that justify the wait? Uh, probably not. In a couple of years people will forget how long it took for the game to come out and see it just as another entry in the series. So the topic of development schedules and release date pricing is something that doesn't make sense for me to discuss here. In a year where all the big releases came out shock full of bugs and other problems, Tears of the Kingdom is at least competent as a final released product. If this new take on the series is so different, does it even make any sense comparing it to the other titles? Not really. Majora's Mask is still my favorite of the classic ones, but its setting and mechanics. A Link Between Worlds is ironically a good step between the two, and Tears of the Kingdom is just Breath of the Wild, but bigger and better. If you enjoyed Breath of the Wild for its sense of freedom, then you'll like this one too. But I might even say that this couldn't be just DLC, but by that logic, Splatoon 2 and 3 would also be the same. I will attribute it to software improvements and changes in design philosophy that couldn't be accomplished by just piling more on top of the base they had before. That and, you know, what do you think sells more, DLC for a game that is now 6 years old or the brand new Legend of Zelda title? I bet lore and timeline addicts are gonna have a riot with this one, because I still don't understand how they think it's a good idea of trying to make sense of a series that uses time fuckery so much. Anyway, I can't wait to see what sorts of bullshit people will come up with, I just know that it's going to be a lot of fun.